Dear students, welcome back to the pharmacology class. Today's topic of discussion is neurotransmitter. As we discussed in the previous class about the organization and function of autonomic nervous system, today we are going to brush our knowledge on the neurotransmitters, neurohumoral transmission of the autonomic nervous system. So let's look into the next slides. So let's quickly go through the content slide. It comprises of the neurohumoral transmission, co-transmitters or co-transmission, neurotransmitters, types of neurotransmitters, diagrammatic representation of types of neurotransmitters. So coming to the neurohumoral transmission. So, what is neurohumoral transmission? It is basically a process by which a presynaptic cell on excitation releases a specific chemical agent or a neurotransmitter to cross the synapse to stimulate or inhibit the postsynaptic cell, resulting in the enhancement or inhibition of response so what does it mean that is when a presynaptic cell gets excited or undergoes a action potential it releases a chemical messenger or a neurotransmitter to cross the synapse to stimulate or inhibit the postsynaptic resulting in the initiation of response means what a presynaptic then the release of chemicals postsynaptic and the initiation of a response next is the nerve cells transmit their messages on across the synapse by releasing the chemical mediators from nerve ending into synaptic cleft so ultimately what happens there is an influx of ca plus ion during the nerve impulse release of transmitter from the synaptic vesicles of the presynaptic nerve into the synaptic cleft that reach the postsynaptic receptor site or exert their action. Now, what is a synaptic cleft? Synaptic cleft is the space between a presynaptic and a postsynaptic axon. And what is a synaptic vesicle? Synaptic vesicle is the area or it is a type of sac where the neurotransmitter is present within the presynaptic neuron. Now let's quickly jump into the various steps of the neurohumoral transmission. Step 1 that is impulse conduction. Step 2, release of transmitter or neurotransmitter. Step 3 is a transmitter action on the post-junctional membrane. Step 4 is the post-junctional activity. And step 5 is the termination or end of transmitter action. So, let me quickly tell you a few points regarding the step 1. So, in step 1, what I said is impulse conduction. It means what? The resting membrane potential at 70 MV is established by high potassium ion permeability of axonal membrane and high axoplasmic concentration of this ion which is coupled with low sodium permeability and its active extrusion from the neuron. So ultimately what is happening? Stimulation or arrival of an electrical impulse cause on the sudden increase in sodium conductance, depolarization and occurrence of action potentials takes place. So in the step 1 that is impulse conduction there is a generation of action potential. Next is the transmitter release. The transmitter release is stored in the pre-junctional nerve endings within the synaptic vesicle. As I said so now what happens here there is the nerve impulses promotes the fusion of vesicular and axonal membranes through CA plus entry 
which fluidizes the membranes and all contents of the vesicle that is the synaptic vesicle the transmitter the enzymes and other proteins are exocytosis occurring in the junctional cleft this means what there is a extrusion or exocytosis or the extrusion of the neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft so in the first point we have done the action potential second point is the extrusion of neurotransmitter step 3 is the transmitter action on post junctional membrane that is the release of a transmitter combines with specific receptors on the post junctional membrane and depending on its nature it induces two types of potential one is epsp another is ipsp what is epsp epsp is the excitatory post synaptic potential and ipsp is the inhibitory post synaptic potential so in this phase this is occurring last is the post junctional activity that is the supra threshold epsp that is excitatory potential generates a propagated post junctional action potential which results in nerve impulse or secretion and ipsp stabilizes the post junctional membrane and resists the depolarizing stimuli so this step there is a post junctional activity of the release of neurotransmitter from the pre junction takes place and last step is the termination of transmitter action that is the various mechanisms of termination of transmitter actions is said and here what happens here we can see the transmitter either gets decreted or partly taken back into the prejunctional neuron by active reuptake or partly diffuses away so this way the various steps of the neurohumeral transmission is taking place so at first what happens there is a generation of action potential in impulse conduction in the release of transmitter that is the exocytosis of the neurotransmitters in the synaptic cleft next is this neurotransmitters reaches the post junctional membrane to show its activity then it is going to the post junctional cell or post junctional neuron where it is showing its activity after binding with the receptors and finally this neurotransmitters either gets used up in the post junctional cell or gets degraded away or diffused away so this way the various steps of neurohumeral transmission takes place next is the cotransmitter or cotransmission so what is basically a cotransmitter it is stored in the prejunctional nerve terminal along with a primary transmitter but in separate vesicles so the nerve impulse release both the transmitters concurrently acting on its own receptor the cotransmitter modifies the responsiveness of the effector to the primary transmitter or substitute it cotransmitter may also act as a prejunctional receptors and modulate the release of transmitter so this is a very important point that i have highlighted so basically what is a cotransmitter it is stored in the pre junctional neuron or nerve terminal along with the primary transmitter but in separate vesicle so this is the basic of a cotransmitter let's quickly see the various examples that is the parasympathetic nerves innervates the salivary glands and the sympathetic innervation to many tissues which releases the vasoconstrictor neuropeptide y in addition to non adrenaline and here also i have just cited few of the example c dopamine among the amino or amino acid dopamine norepinephrine epinephrine serotonin acetylcholine and gamma amino butyric acid and here among the peptides it consists of cholecystokinin en enkephaline 
neurotensin, substance P, somatostatin and motilin. So these are the various examples of co-transmitter. Now coming to our main topic that is neurotransmitter. So, neurotransmitter is basically a chemical messenger or chemical substance as we have seen in the previous slide which is used to communicate with one another neuron and with the target tissues in the process of synaptic transmission and this synaptic transmission is known as neurotransmission. So, what happens? Neurotransmitters are synthesized and released from the nerve endings into the synaptic cleft. So, students, if you look on the right hand side picture, this is one neuron. This is another neuron. This space is known as a synaptic cleft. This balloon shaped structures, this is known as synaptic vesicle. And this red colored substances is your neurotransmitters. So, how this neurotransmitter is stored in this presynaptic region and then it is transferred to the post-junctional region, you can see the diagram, it is very clearly depicted. So, now next what is said, the target tissue gets excited, inhibited or functionally modified in some other way. There are more than 40 neurotransmitters are present in the human nervous system. Some of them important are acetylcholine, norepinephrine, dopamine, GABA aminobutyric acid, glutamate, serotonin and histamine. So, we can get an idea that what is a neurotransmitter? It is a chemical messenger which transmits the impulses from one neuron to another neuron and it helps in the release of this neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft and there are about 40 neurotransmitters in a human nervous system it comprises of acetylcholine norepinephrine dopamine gaba aminobutyric acid glutamate serotonin and histamine so in this part you have to remember what is neurotransmitter or a short note on neurotransmitter and for the various examples here you can see the mechanism of the neurotransmitter it has been synthesized and formation in the vesicles transport of the neurotransmitter down the axon then you can see the action potential is occurring here then the vesicles with the neurotransmitters are transported back Sec next is you can see the action potential causes the calcium to enter and evoking the release of neurotransmitter. This neurotransmitter attaches itself. Then you goes to the separation of the neurotransmitter. Then is the reuptake of neurotransmitter. Finally, the vesicles without neurotransmitter are transported back to the cell. So this way you can see what is the mechanism or function of a neurotransmitter or you can say the functioning of a neurotransmitter release reuptake and its various processes so now let's quickly look into the types of neurotransmitter the basic broad types of neurotransmitter is the excitatory inhibitory and both excitatory and inhibitory in excitatory i have cited examples glutamate aspartate and nitric oxide in inhibitory glycine gaba serotonin and or serotonic you can say and dopamine and in both it comprises of acetylcholine and norepinephrine so let's quickly read into this that is it is based on the chemical and molecular properties the major classes of neurotransmitters includes amino acids such as glutamate glycine monoamines such as dopamine and norepinephrine peptides such as somatostatin and opioids and purines are adenosine phosphate so this way the various types of examples of neurotransmitter along with its classification is given Next is some gaseous substances such as nitric oxide can also act as a neurotransmitter. Endogenous substances known as the tres amines which are related chemically to the monoamines example the tryptamine and phenethylamine. Next is the acetylcholine a substance synthesized by neurons is a primary neurotransmitter and which controls the smooth muscle contraction, blood vessels, dilation and slows down the 
heart rate and next is the major inhibitory neurotransmitter is GABA that is GABA aminobutyric acid which acts to dampen the neural functions. It, so it helps in dampening the neural functions. So here I have cited the few more examples on which types of nerves it is acting you can see. Here at first that is the acetylcholine that is nicotinic mascarinic and the sympathetic nerves it is acting the norepinephrine that is both on alpha and beta receptors and the sympathetic nerves it is acting on both the norepinephrine and epinephrine that is the alpha and beta receptor. You all should know that epinephrine and norepinephrine forms the catecholamines and those are the adrenergic receptors that is alpha and beta and cholinergic receptors that is nicotinic and mascarinic and all the annotations are clearly given with the help of this you can understand what is E, what is NE, what is alpha, what is beta and whatever it is. Okay. So what I said the epinephrine and non-epinephrine together forms a catecholamine. This is a catching up point from here. Now let's quickly at a glance see what are the effects of neurotransmitters. Excitatory neurotransmitters, the examples you always should remember, acetylcholine, histamine, dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine. Inhibitory comprises of GABA that is most important. You should remember dopamine and serotonin. Next is neuromodulators that is dopamine, serotonin, acetylcholine and the neurohormones that is the releasing of hormones from hypothalamus that is oxytocin and vasopressin. So this way we complete the entire introduction, the classification, the mechanism, the functioning of neurotransmitter, neurohumoral transmission, co-transmitter and co-transmission. These are the references of the pictures from the source that I have taken. So the reference has been provided with the slides. Thank you students for listening to the video. Hope this video will help you in doing your assignments and especially for the part of neurotransmitters. The examples are very very important along with its classification. Hope you all go through this slide sincerely and do the rest accordingly. Thank you for listening.